Hi, my name's Matt, and I'm here to discuss how to size your off-grid solar PV system and how Race Solar's online load calculator makes renewable energy easy by helping you find a pre-engineered off-grid system to meet your needs. So what does it actually mean to be off-grid? Being off-grid means that you're not connected to a larger electrical distribution system and are then responsible for producing and storing your own electrical energy and powering your loads when they're needed. These processes of producing, storing, and powering are accomplished by using the primary off-grid system components. Solar panels and charge controllers are used to produce and regulate the power, the batteries take the power and store it into energy for use at a later time, and the inverter takes the stored energy to power the loads. The first step to sizing an off-grid system is to identify the daily power and energy demand from the electrical load appliances connected to it. When it comes to sizing your system, there is no one-size-fits-all. Maybe you're only using the system on the weekends, or for long stretches a few months out of the year. You'll also want to consider whether it's for three-season application, or whether it's for use all year round. We consider the occupancy and seasonal usage patterns to form a better understanding of the conditions that the system will need to perform in. Roof-mounted solar PV systems are typically geared toward three-season use, while top-of-pole ground-mounted systems are ideal for four-season applications. Off-grid solar PV in Canada brings with it its own set of challenges. For winter operation, snow can cover your solar PV panels, the days are shorter, and the sun is lower in the sky, requiring a more steeply sloped, southern-facing array. Now that we've reviewed the basic concepts, let's break it down a bit further. When sizing your system, you want to consider the maximum power draw at any one time and the daily energy consumption over a 24-hour period. The occupancy and seasonal usage is broken down into the following variable combinations. These usage scenarios allow us to rate a system to allow for the available sun hours per day, depth of discharge, and days of autonomy. Next, let's talk about how to calculate the maximum power demand and the daily energy consumption that you'd see in a 24-hour period. Power is determined by multiplying voltage by current, whereas energy is determined by multiplying power by time. Now let's see an example using some familiar appliances that you might see out at your seasonal cottage. Let's say I have my all-important coffee maker, and I plan on making two pots of coffee a day. I check the label, and I see that it uses 900 watts of power. I can assume that that full 900 watts of power is used for less than 15 minutes each time the coffee is brewed. I can account for this power and energy consumption by filling out a table like this one. For two brews of coffee at 900 watts for 0.25 hours, that's 450 watt hours. I can now complete this load assessment for each of the appliances that will need power. Let's say I have 10 incandescent light bulbs. Each uses 50 watts and run them for 4 hours in the evening. That's a total of 2000 watt hours. And I kind of think that's too much energy, so I'm going to swap them out for 10 watt LEDs. I also have two fans running for eight hours a day to cool off. After quickly checking the label, I can see that the fan uses 0.25 amps at 120 volts, which multiplied together tells me that each of the fans uses 30 watts of power. So both fans operating at 30 watts for eight hours is a total of 480 watt hours. Next, I'll include my toaster, a laptop I'll use eight hours a day, my internet modem, which runs 24 hours a day, and my fridge. When determining the daily energy consumption for a fridge, you'll want to check the manufacturer's specifications to find the annual kilowatt hours and divide that number by 365 days to find the total daily energy consumption of the fridge. To determine our maximum power demand, let's look at the appliances that could be simultaneously active. So we have our 900 watt coffee maker. Even though we're making two pots of coffee, we're only making one at a time. So that's 900 watts. And considering all of our other appliances now, add them all together and we see that we get a total of 2,340 watts or 2.34 kilowatts. Now, if we wanted to use a 2 kilowatt inverter, we can see that we're exceeding that 2 kilowatts with 2.34 kilowatts. If we consider only using the coffee maker after the toaster and not at the same time, we can remove the coffee maker's 900 watts from our equation and we see that the new power demand is 1,440 watts or 1.44 kilowatts. And now we can add together the daily energy consumption from each of our appliances. We find that the total daily energy consumption is a total of 4,260 watt hours per day, or 4.26 kilowatt hours per day. And now we have all the necessary information to size our system. But what if I told you there's an easier way? You can try our website load calculator by going to www.raysolar.ca calculator. Begin by entering your contact information, as well as any additional information relevant to the site that you'd like to include. And then we'll proceed to the second step. Here we can see common load appliances to select from. We see LED lights, 
a table fan, toaster, coffee maker, a fridge, laptop, and internet. We'll proceed to the next step where we can review these results in more detail. Here you can make any last minute adjustments to your selected appliances. We'll have 10 quantity lights. We'll operate them for 4 hours per day. We have two table fans at 30 watts each for 8 hours per day. We have our toaster. We have two pots of coffee. We have our laptop. We'll be using that for 8 hours per day. And we have the internet that operates at 24 hours per day. Here you also have the option to add a custom appliance if it wasn't listed on the previous step. And then we'll proceed to the final page. Here we can see the total daily energy consumption is listed and we're presented with the appropriately sized pre-engineered RS off-grid package options. In this example, we're presented with the RS3 Pro, a lithium battery package option, as well as the RS5, which uses FLA or AGM lead-acid batteries. Either of these systems will meet the power and energy needs for this project, and these two options deliver their own unique benefits and are presented so that you can choose whether you'd like to use lithium or lead-acid batteries. Thanks for watching, and let us know how we can help you make renewable energy easy.